Sport Fishing on the Fly is brought to you by Togan's Fly Shop, Maui Jim Sunglasses, and Hardy Rods and Reels. Well, we're back at the Skeena for 2002. You know, this year is looking better. The fish numbers are up, especially the steelhead, which is great to see because in 2021, the steelhead numbers were the worst ever recorded. You know, uh, very concerning. So really when we come up, a lot of times we are targeting the coho. The coho are phenomenal. There's, uh, they're great to fish for. They're plentiful, uh, good coho return this year. And you know, a record sockeye return for 2022, like over 5 million. So really encouraging to see the salmon numbers regardless. I just want to go through the quick setup of how we're gonna, how we're gonna chase those, how I like to target the coho. I mean, you will get the odd steelhead ripping through, but this is what I like to use. So I've got a switch rod. I've got a, uh, got a 12 foot, 12 foot four inch, my NXT. And this NXT Opti that's all loop, it's excellent. It's just, you know, it's not a real switch. I mean, 12 foot, they say a switch rod's up to 11. This 12 footer is perfect for me. I've got a scatchet tip down to a, uh, a short. So I've got the Skagit tip I use down to a short, you know, final tip. So this Skagit head, if you really want to get it out there, you can. But you know, you're casting in there short. You don't have to go far, but it's nice to put it on there for the weight. But these tips are critical. The tip will just get you down in that faster water, or even in the pocket water. And you want short tips. If you go long tips, like 15 foot, you don't want that. You want maximum. This one's seven and a half foot. I use seven and a half foot to 10 foot tips. I love the seven and a half, the T11s up to T17. If I've got a little deeper water, I go to the T17, or normally I'll use the T11, T12 that gets me down there. I go just a couple of feet down to a swivel and the swivel just helps things unwind. You know, if you're running flies that can twist and turn, if you don't put a swivel on, you bring your line and a lot of times it's all kinkled up. It's not good. So I like to have a swivel there, and then again, another few feet down to my fly. And that's all you're doing. Keep your leader short because you want, you know, maximum four feet, because you want that fly line to get the fly down. Of course, the ever critical flies. What I really like are the jig flies. I mean, I've got a whole variety. They love this style. You know, that uh, that is uh, Don's cold jig. It's got the rubber legs, that color, the, the pink and the purple with the heads, the smaller, you know, the smaller ones I've used. Sometimes, you know, I find that the coal really key on those uh, colors. But again, uh, these ones for the steelhead, the darker colors seem to work well. So you got a variety of flies. Of course, we have the flashers, you know, smaller beaded flies that work really good when it's sunny out. So you just gotta try it. I'm gonna show everybody those techniques. And hopefully we've got a few coal today as we take you sport fishing on the fly mini stop. So here's the ideal place, you know, what you're looking for. You want areas where the fish, you can see the big hole there. Those fish can sit in that hole and rest. And you've got really fast current going up this side. So on that far side is a really high flow, but all in here, it steps up. So you can see a little step down there. You've got another, another holding pocket here. And then the fish have to push through the shallow part of the run. All the way through these little pockets, it's really only three, four feet deep, not even, it's probably two to three feet deep, all through here. And they slide up, you can see where Dale is and Rick's, they're all up where the boat is and then push through that corner. So this is where we try to target them, all through this pocket water and down through these seams, which is really nice. So these steelhead, they'll come right up the coho, they come all along here. And really it's just a matter of trying to get it in front of their face, right? They'll, some fit, like especially the coal, we've seen them actually chase the fly. The steelhead will, as long as the water's clear. 
and right now we've got really good visibility you can look down in there and see we've got probably three plus feet of visibility in the skino which is excellent for this kind of swinging so it's just perfect it's just a matter of finding that good water where it goes from a resting hole up through a nice shallow slick with little pockets the fish can rest and push through that's what you're looking for so i'm going to swing a few through here and see if we can get some Oh, this thing had to go with us. Had to go with the jig, you know, it was down the far end. And uh, it was really, actually looked shallower, but it was deeper than I thought. I had a couple of fish on with the enticer, but it wasn't getting down. So I started bouncing the big jig. You know, I put on my 1 8 ounce. It's not too heavy, but it's a, you know, it's just a great coho jig. The coho, for some reason, like I said earlier, I can't get a steelhead on it, but the coho loves it. Side, but there he's there. Look at that. You know, they're the coho you're gonna get, especially with the jig. I'm gonna show you in the setup. So again, I moved up into a little, a little bouncer of water. <laughs> there he is there. So again, the setup you need. I mentioned that'd be a trope. So that's all it is. It's just again, I've got a T11. So I've got a T11. Sink tip on. There's my, there's my T11 sink tip. Got a couple of feet down to my swivel just to keep the action on the jig, especially it twists up if you don't. And then a few feet down to your jig. And that's where you want to you want to vary. You want to vary the fly so the jig will bounce along. Again, for some reason the coho will love it, but I can't seem to get a steelhead on it. And if I go to the small enticer with the bead head that I showed you earlier. I was getting down, but I wasn't quite, like I had a couple of fish on, but I couldn't hold on, so they weren't really grabbing it, but they love that jig. That's all you do, just bounce it, pull it across, go home. That was close, then. You're always at the end of the swing, you know, very rarely. I get them when it's drifting, it's always near the end of the swing. I think it's a coho. Oh, oh. oh no. It's a nice coho by the looks. Was it? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> oh. Well, windy conditions, right? The sun's going to come up today. So we just started again, though. You know, that little jig. The coho love it. Yeah, they love that jig. And I just, you know, I just made the down across out there. Every time it's just sitting there, right? I'm just giving one strip. Bam. So what is it? They well, I don't know. It. They like that jig. It just bounces across the rocks or something. I mean, you got a sink tip line. I got the sink tip. There's no weight. No, no all. weight. Just, no, just, just, well, just, just the jig. jig head. But you know, it, you can feel a tick once in a while. Yeah. But it's always at the end of that swing. And when you pop it, it must be in front of them and they just whack it. I don't know what it is, oh. but that was a nice goal. Oh. <laughs> a loss. And the bully's into one. Looks like a coho. Oh yeah, you took it right off the surface. Yeah, right off the top, eh? Oh yeah. Oh, oh, oh. Sure it's not a steelhead or was it a coho? Oh, a coho. Coho. Nice. Yeah, look at it. Took that well, you got the bruiser? Oh you got the yeah, Judah. And look where he took it. Right on the very, right off the top layer, right in the very tip. You know, it does show you how aggressive the coho are. Right? They're super aggressive. Steelhead and coho are the two I find the most aggressive. Oh, they are. And they, when the water's clean. Right? Yeah, when the water's clean. That's right. They can grab it. Oh, yeah. Look at that. Well, you're going to you're gonna have fun trying to get your, you know, want me to try or what? Alright, you have a steel? Okay, no, sure. Okay. Oh, yeah. oh, look at that, eh? Right, right in the very top where he just tried to eat it. 
And that was right at the end of your swing too, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah. Right yeah. Oh, look at that. Difficult. Yeah. Difficult. Yeah. Well, I can say to everybody, try to keep them on the, keep them in the water. You know, especially when you're releasing them. These nice fish right in the top. Oh, Judas. Oh, oh. oh right in there. Yeah, you know what? That's her. That's uh, kind of generic size, isn't it? That. Kind of seven, eight, probably eight pound range, nine pound range. Ah, see. Oh, gorgeous. Nice fish. Yeah, beautiful. Nice and thick. Yeah. Oh, see, it's gorgeous. Nice when, they, when they snap it right off the oh, surface yeah. like that. Well, he's lucky. He gets to go. Get him out. The... Yeah. Oh, yeah. He'll go from here. Yeah, oh, there he goes. Right over that ridge. Yeah. All right. On the Judah. So I'm working the. I'm working the jig. Same kind of yeah, color. Yes, and you got the Judah. Judah it down, yeah. yeah. Right? <laughs> and right by shore, like right in by shore yeah, in those pockets. Over, but when you got clean water, I find that's why we're fishing so close. And a lot of times they'll just float that fly up and they'll just yeah. come right up, steelhead too, right off the surface. Well, especially with two, three feet of water and yeah. clear water. You just Oof, I love it. Oiled on it. Excellent. <laughs> I look like a big coal. Well, that guy again just smoked it by shore. Isn't that amazing? Yeah, a little rich. See my little, uh, right in here. See this little pocket where you are? It's about three feet deep and they just rust in there and sit there. Every time I swim, they just put two feet in there. There's big ones on the cake and this guy hit it hard. I think he, I think he grabbed her hard. Well, he's been jumping around, so we'll see how. Whoa! Yeah, but you mentioned it. With those in, intruder type hooks, they got the flexibility. Yeah. My uh, my jig hook, it's it's straight, right? It's yeah, really and tough. they can get their head in those rocks and knock the jig head. Uh, the intruder hooks stay hooked a lot better, but. I think you better go to the pocket. So a quarter ounce is gonna slink it out and you're going you know you're going in to six seven feet like deeper water out there so you need the heavier stuff but this one it's all you need just an eight ounce jig you might you'll feel a tick once in a while but as that swings in every time it gets near the shoreline those co are sitting there they whack it and how heavy is your sink tip is that that t11 so this there? is a t11 i've got on a real and again the key i said during the intro short like you want the sink tip just in the water so the flies just just barely ticking and it has a nice swing in to the fish because if you got too long a sink tip it gets in the rocks everything's messed up and it's no good so max 10 foot i like the seven and a half and five foot. just short t11 to t17 depending on your depth that's it and you got your i got my my swivel there to stop the jig from rotating too much and messing up my line and the jig and again, a 1 8 ounce, they're easy to cast, and they're not heavy. It's working. It's yeah, this, working. This color. Again, yeah, Rob that color. Cuff. Yeah, that Rob color Cuff is sent me those jigs on Ben Rod, like you showed me, with that ice stub, the pink ice stub and the purple, and I added the little rubber legs, 
and it coho just love it. They do they love can't it. Take it. <laughs> can't say anything about your growth and your face. What growth? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I should have. <laughs> I said I'd leave it. I just come up here and knock chafe for a couple weeks. Or weeks it something. looks like he's the 80 year old Don. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, got to take a break. You know, it's been an outstanding day. We've uh, we've landed four coho, uh, had numerous on that get off. You know, it's uh, <laughs> they're just big fighting fish. But you know, it's it's kind of funny on these jigs, especially the one that uh, the rod toss showed me with the you know the pink and the purple. I think it'd be ideal colors for steelhead, but I always got to go to the darker colors. So I just want to show everybody. I'm gonna dig into the box here. And this is what I always generally have to go to. So if you look there, so there's my quarter ounce. So I've got my quarter ounce jigs all up in here. You know, all tied with that same kind of colors. But these are my steelhead jigs. So I've always had to go with the darker colors. You know, just like the bruiser. We've always had to go with the, with the blues and blacks and the purples. And I don't know why without the rubber legs. And yet we've got, you know, we've got rubber legs on Judas and stuff. I've uh, even tied some with the, uh, you know, with the little worm out the back that you'll get the steelhead on. So these are all good. So I think this afternoon what I'm going to do is I'm going to put on some, uh, try a couple of the lighter steelhead jigs. I don't want to go too deep. So that's what I put on if I go deep. If I go into that six feet plus of water, I'll throw it on a quarter ounce, sling it out there and, you know, and, and bounce it through and it works really good, you know, when they run deep. But you know, the majority of fish on the Skeena run shallow, especially when you've got them in these tight, confined quarters, right? They have to come up this side. It's very tight, too fast on the other side, and they're just taking these way up, and that's where you can get them with these kind of outfits. So when we come back, uh, you know what I think we'll do is go to the bench. I, I'm gonna put on the one we tied you before. It was, uh, I think it was my, uh, my coho jig. Let's go to the bench, tie that for you, and when we come back, I'm going after some steelhead. Today on the bench, I want to tie you up Don's coho jig. Now, I've got to thank Rod Toth of Bent Rods. He actually showed me this pattern, very similar to this one with the right colors, and all I did is I modified it for coho. So make sure you have these materials ready before you tie the fly. For the hook, we'll use a one quarter ounce purple Bent Rods jig hook. We'll tie with some six aught black thread. We'll use some purple marabou for the tail, some purple hot pink silly legs for the legs, and some hot pink UV polar chenille for the body. To start to fly off, I have the hook in the vise, and I'm just gonna put a base layer of thread on here, and just wanna cover your hook fully up. Now I've taken three silly legs, I'm gonna wrap them on my thread, and tie them right behind the bead. So right behind that big jig hook, and you'll see the legs will get fairly long. So what I do is I'll pull them over slightly. I just want to measure them up. So when, I, when they're finished, they're about the length of the hook. So I'm gonna go back and you'll have a whole bunch of material here, but that's all right. Cause you're just gonna wrap this in and over. So we'll just wrap it up, cover all that, cover all those legs and take those legs back right to the bend of the hook. Now the legs are tied in. I've taken two marabou feathers, purple ones. Going to measure it up again about the length, just so they're extending just about the length of the legs and tie that in. I've now moved my thread up towards behind the jig head and I'm going to tie in my UV pink hot pink material and we're just going to wrap this forward to form the body and as you wrap keep pulling that material back to form a nice full body.
now that the body's tied in i'm going to take my whip finisher and i'm going to go around i'm going to give it a couple of good whips probably about uh you know four turns for each one probably going to whip finish it over about three times and that should do it for the fly So there it is, Don's Coho Jig. You know, I gotta thank Rod Toth of Bent Rods. He actually showed me the original pattern and all that it did is I made a few tweaks to make it a coho jig. But make sure you have some in your box if you're going out for coho. So I'm gonna show everybody what we're doing. So I'm waiting out, you know, if you look, I'm not deep, I'm probably in a, just waiting to a foot of water and casting out into that four, three to four feet. And the really important part about this is where my fly is ending up. Right here, there's a shallow water ridge right in front of me that my jig is just, just ticking once we're just bouncing. As I'm going through, right at the very end of my swing is a pocket, right where you see the rod tip wiggling. That's the pocket where Dale is. That's where most, well, actually all of my fish have been caught. As soon as it, you got to get it down, let it swing down across, and right there, and sometimes I just bring it back like this, bring it this way, and then cast again. So a lot of times, those coho will actually hit it when you're bringing it back. And if I've got more line out, if I go deeper with a quarter ounce jig, I do the same thing, bringing it back this way, and then cast again. Because those coho are so aggressive, you're just trying to get it in front of the fish. So I'm fishing shallow water with the eighth ounce. I will use the, uh, I'll use my little bead head fly enticers. I'll use the bruiser because it's so shallow. I can have it sitting up top for those steelhead. And this is exactly how we work it over these ridges and let that sink right into those pockets where the fish might sit, right? Right down there is a little deeper water. So cast out over these ridges. So you're always trying to find those little deeper holes where the fly can move through or actually sit to get the fish. Oh, nope, that was not bad. I've got the net this time. That was, that fish went psycho. He hooked it and he was cartwheeling down the river. Could be difficult getting this guy down. Down in the end pool, but I don't know. He's way out there. What a battle, eh? Whoa. Way down here, but look at look at the size of this steelhead. Look at that. You know, always keep his head in the water. Let him breathe, but look at that. Isn't that gorgeous? That that's what it's all about. And he hit right right in front of you, right by shore. Yeah. Hang on. He's gonna go. Ooh. There he goes. Oh yeah. Yeah, swung it in. We needed two of us. Couldn't do the recording for no the landing. Way. There's no way. He I had to get he the net. Down here, skying and like crazy. That was unreal. That's awesome. So, you know what? That's my first steelhead I've caught on the jig. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. That yeah, hit the you know, every time it's been cold, that guy was right in my short skin. The heck out of both yeah. of us with a big... <laughs> right in my feet. Yeah, right in yeah. a big car wheel and gone. Oh, cool. Very good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right.
Oh boy, that's it, eh? What do you think? Yeah. It's a wrap. That's it for today. It's hot. <laughs> it's so hot here, you can't even take it. It's 32 degrees or something. No sure. kidding. It's just a wrap. We've been, you know, in the sun. We've had a heat wave for the past 10 days. We're here for one more day. But, you know, we took a, a day out to film just to do this, uh, this little mini for you. It's a great place to come if you want to get cold. Potential for steelhead. Of course, the steelhead runs aren't what they used to, but they're still here. Uh, good salmon this year, lots of uh, sockeye, lots of coal, so it was exceptional. So if you want to come out here, you got to take care. Conserver Waters, we'll see you next time when we take a sport fishing on the fly, mini style. And I am just roasting hot right now.